Nuclear fusion is the mythical goal, the goal to create truly clean, abundant, virtually free energy that's just limitless. Is it real? Is it possible? Well, of course. The key question is here, how much energy do you have to put in to get a net energy benefit out? Well, US scientists have once again exercised the fact that they now appear to have almost mastered nuclear fusion. They've run the same tests. Many people have been cynical. They're saying, no, 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 this is not going to work. But they've proven in the laboratory once again that there may be some serious merit and substance to the US government's ability to produce nuclear fusion. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. It's great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Sam Evans of the Electric Viking. And abundant clean energy is pretty much all what this channel is about. Now, I don't believe nuclear reactors in with our current technology are commercially viable, not even close, because nuclear energy is not getting any cheaper based on current reactor technology. It's not. In fact, generally, it costs twice as much to build a nuclear power plant as the budget that is proposed at the beginning of the project. Generally, it takes twice as long to build one. And generally, anyone living within about a 30 kilometer radius will move away. That's actually very common. Nuclear reactors are very different though to nuclear fusion. Completely, completely different. However, the challenge here is achieving nuclear fusion requires an insane amount of heat. In fact, it requires temperatures hotter than the surface of the sun. So you have to put in a huge amount of energy to get a net energy benefit. However, U.S. scientists have now said that they've achieved a net energy gain in a nuclear fusion reaction for the second time since a historic breakthrough in December last year in the quest to find a near limitless, safe and clean source of energy, basically in the quest to save the world. Scientists at the California-based Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory repeated the breakthrough in an experiment in the National Ignition Facility on the 30th of July that produced a high energy yield, in fact, a much higher energy yield than it did in December, a Lawrence Livermore spokesperson said. So it appears as though they're actually improving the technology. Final results are still being analyzed. Nuclear fusion involves smashing together light elements such as hydrogen to form heavier elements, releasing a huge burst of energy in the process. And it's really, if you watch the, the movie, Oppenheimer, his fear was that something like this could go wrong, potentially destroying the world. The approach which gives rise to the heat and light of the sun and other stars has been hailed as having huge potential as a sustainable, low carbon energy source. But critics are still very mixed in their reactions towards what's been happening. In December, Lawrence Livermore first achieved a net energy gain in a fusion experiment using lasers. That experiment briefly achieved what's known as fusion ignition by generating 3.15 megajoules of energy output after the laser delivered 2.05 megajoules to the target, meaning a significant net gain of energy. The difference was a plus of 1.1 megajoules. In other words, it produced more energy from fusion than the laser energy used to drive it. That's the key here. And it didn't just produce a little bit more. It produced a lot more energy. The US Department of Energy called it a major scientific breakthrough, decades in the making that will pave the way for advancements in national defense and the future of clean power. Now, what do they mean by advancements in terms of national defense? Well, I think you can put two and two together and work out what they could potentially be planning on doing with it. That's um, all a little bit concerning if you think too deeply about it. Fusion energy raises the prospect though, on the flip side, of plentiful clean power. The reactions release no greenhouse gases or radioactive waste byproducts. A single kilogram of fusion fuel, which is made up of heavy forms of hydrogen called deuterium and tritium provides as much energy as 10 million kilograms of fossil fuel. See the difference? One kilogram versus 10 million kilograms of coal. 
but it's taken 70 years to get to this point. That said, it appears as though progress is actually happening very quickly, going from eight, this second test happened only nine months after the first test, and it's said to have been a much, produced a much greater result. We don't know exactly what that result is yet, though. Scientists have warned, though, that the technology is far from ready to turn into viable power plants, and it's not about to solve the climate crisis within the next five years. They have, though, held the latest breakthrough as evidence that the power of the stars can be harnessed on Earth does sound like a bit of an ominous warning though. The power of the stars can be harnessed on Earth by creating a reaction that generates more heat than the surface of the sun. Well, well, the way I see this, it could either end really, really well and possibly bring enough energy to the entire planet to be able to get rid of fossil fuels very quickly, or it could end very badly, or just with a whimper. What do you guys think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching.